thank you for the introduction. Today we are going to discuss about the Oracle database and how it fits uh, in the new DevOps uh, environment. This is the safe harbor statement. And a few words about me. I've been working in IT in the industry for more than 10 years, mostly around the databases and database options. I've started uh, with the application development, moved to a DBA position for a financial company and uh, joined Oracle as a data management engineer. And uh, this is my first time presenting uh, in a user group. But, uh, so uh, let's see, let's see how it goes. Let's start with this, uh, with this image. What usually companies want to achieve is to deliver fast and safe their products to their end users. So in order to do it, they uh, need to have a process in place that would look uh, more or less similar with what we have here. So uh, what we see here is an infinite loop because uh, companies don't do don't uh, deploy their products uh, only one time. They constantly develop and deploy new code and new functionality. They start by planning their new code, uh, new functionalities. Uh, they code it, they build it, they test it, release, deploy, operate, and monitor. As you can see, this uh, infinite loop uh, would involve a collaboration between the development and the operations. But there are situations where uh, challenges come. So like uh, one example would be to have in the development environment a similar uh, database as, uh, as a production environment in the shortest time possible. I've put here together some of the most uh, common challenges that developers have uh, in relation to, to the database. What I've seen so far, application teams wait for, for, DBAs to, uh, for, for their database to be ready. Test databases are created usually with DBA's intervention. Schema changes are typically applied manually by the DBA's and no automatic delivery pipeline is possible if a database change is involved. We will see in today's presentation and also with the help of a few demos, how we can overcome these challenges and what tools are there for us to use. As you might already have figured it out that we have one, one side, the developers, and on the other side, the operation DBAs. So let's see how we bridge the gap between these two teams and what tools we have in order to help them collaborate better in order to achieve the same goal of faster uh, delivery of the products. We will discuss some products today. As we can uh, see here, we have uh, on one side the multi-tenant option. On the other side, we have the RDS that stands for Oracle REST Data Services. And last but not least, we will discuss about database versioning product that is called Liquidbase. We will see how this product can work together in order to bridge the gap. Let's start with the Oracle uh, database multi-tenant option. Uh, it will not be a, a very detailed presentation on this architecture. If you are interested in it, there is a presentation later today done by Paolo that, ha uh, that gives more detail on the option. I'll only highlight some of the functionalities that make sense to the presentation I have today. The new multi-tenant architecture was introduced in 12C and we have now a new architecture featuring pluggable databases. Uh, we can create a single multi-tenant container database and into this container we can plug multiple pluggable databases. Why it is important to have it? Because it gives us, gives us rapid provisioning of the pluggable databases 
so we can copy very quickly from one environment to the other or uh, in the same uh, in the same container we can clone the pluggable databases we have portability what does this mean that we can uh, unplug uh, the pdb from one container and plug it in another container very fast with not a lot of preparation to to be done before so what's in it for for the dba so for the DBAs, uh, they can manage many as one to patch all the pluggable databases in the same step to upgrade it. And the uh, most important is that they can offer their developers or their QAs a self-service platform. They are able to, to provision their own, uh, own pluggable databases. We need one extra tool to do this. We will, uh, we will see it in, uh, later in the presentation what more is needed to build this uh, self-service platform. And last but not least, of course, we have a better use of resources. One of the functionalities we are going to leverage in our demo is the cloning. Using the PDB clone, we can clone from one environment to the other, having the source database open. So no need to use RMAN to back up your database and after that to restore it. It can take a couple of hours, if not days. By using this uh, PDB clone capability, you can have your clone in the development environment or in the test environment very fast. Other than this, you can create multiple clones in the same container, this process being much faster than the, than the initial one. By using this functionality, you reduce a lot the time to provision. I was mentioning that other than um, Oracle multi-tenant, we need another tool in order to build our um, uh, self-service uh, platform for, for the database. So that uh, other tool would be the ORDS, that stands for Oracle REST Data Services. What this product is, it is a mid-tier Java application that provides access to the Oracle database resources via REST. I'm not going to introduce all the rest available over there. Today we are going to focus only on the data management APIs. What we can do with these APIs is maybe access data dictionary information, maybe do some monitoring against our database, but most importantly, and what I'll be using in the demo, are the PDB lifecycle management APIs. Data management APIs are available by default, so you don't need to write code in order to, to use them, you just need to enable them. These uh, data management APIs are supported starting with 11G, but of course you'll not be able to do pluggable lifecycle management in uh, 11G, you'll be able to do it in 12C because uh, you have the multi-tenant option introduced in that version. ORDS, yes, it is available for free. It is available both in the Oracle Cloud and on-premise. Works for classic architecture and also for the multi-tenant architecture. And of course, it was built by Oracle for the Oracle database. This would be a high-level uh, architecture diagram. ORDS yes, will stand between your REST client. If you can see here, we need you, you can have your REST client or uh, your application. We have uh, ORDS over here and the database over here. In my demo, I've used the standalone architectures and uh, either use it like this or run it on top of an application server like WebLogic or GlassFish or what, um, other uh, application server that you are currently using. How can you enable this database management API? So you can enable this uh, demo uh, very quickly by setting the value of this parameter to true. So no need to code anything, just set it to true and you'll be able to explode this data management API. I've included here some links to the documentation. So some links to the ORDS documentation in order for you to get an understanding how to set it up, how it works and stuff like this. And on the right side, some, uh, some links to the documentation of the REST APIs available. Of course, it is recommended to use the latest version of the APIs. Before uh, the first demo, let me introduce a small uh, use case that we had with uh, one of our uh, customers uh, from the retail industry in Europe. 
let's be honest, no one likes the provisioning tickets. DBAs is, uh, usually have better things to do than shoveling bikes from one environment to the other. What we did for these customers is help them build ticketing system where their developers could connect and create their own pluggable database. How does this work? The developer connects to the portal, submits a ticket that he wants in a pluggable database. Uh, they also wanted to introduce a validation process. So there was someone over there saying, uh, yes, uh, you are entitled to, to, to request an inflagable database. After they get the okay, a request to create, to provision a new pluggable database was submitted. We had their RDS that sent the, sent the request to the database and the pluggable database was provisioned and made available for the developer. They also integrated in this platform the deletion of the pluggable database, also the import and export of data, also using REST API codes. Let's go to, to the first demo. Insomnia, what is this? It is just a REST client. You can use any other if you are familiar with Postman. It's, uh, it's fine to use it. I also have here my, my database, so I'm con uh, connected to a container database database i uh, i have uh, two pluggable databases open in mount mode and what i will do with the with the insomnia is use some rest api calls to interact with my database so i'll use get to check the status of a pluggable database i will use post to create a new pluggable database and delete to remove it let's start with the get request this uh, this uh, return the status for the for uh, the container level and i will use this one because it will give the status for uh, only one PDB, so for, for PDB1. PDB1, open read, read, write, so we can confirm this in the actual container. We have PDB1 open in mode, mount mode. Let's do a post request. What the post does is to actually create a new pluggable database. So the method is create. This is the name of the new pluggable database. Let's do a send and see what will happen. I also specified here the admin name. So what user I want to administer my pluggable database. I give it a password. Also, you can specify uh, the amount of space allocated of them space and uh, storage space allocated to your pluggable database. And if you want to use your uh, temporary file. It seems like the request has been completed. Let's return to the, con to the database and check it. Indeed, we have the PDB new created and is open in read write mode. And now in order to save some space, I will drop the pluggable database using also a REST API call. Let's change the name because I have another name over here. I give the name over here uh, for the pluggable database that I want to drop. Uh, I also specify in the body. So this is the body of the request. I specified uh, uh, that I also want uh, uh, associated database files to be removed. I do a send. It has been completed. So again, let's check. It uh, has indeed been removed. Before continuing with the second part of the presentation, I have only uh, one uh, one other uh, uh, REST call to, to introduce, and uh, this is also a post, and in the body, we are doing a clone. I'm cloning from an existing pluggable database. In this case, it is PDB1, and I'm creating a new pluggable database called PDB new clone. I'll not do a send because what I will do, I can, generate the code and i can use it in another application maybe in a pipeline like i will do in the demo you can go just here and generate the code that uh, you might require to do some integration 
let's continue with the presentation and after that we will have the second part of the demo last component that we need in order to have everything uh, everything working it is a database versioning tool for my demo what i've used i've used liquid base liquid base is an open source solution for doing database versioning it works across various types of databases so it is not limited to oracle and supports various file formats in order to define the database structure so it supports xml json yaml and sql in my example i've used sql files by integrating liquid base into the overall code versioning management system and continuous integration platform you can synchronize your database version with your actual application version how can you use it how can you invoke it this is just an example on how can you can you invoke it java minus jar liquid base or jar calling the the actual jar you specify here the driver using an oracle database hence i use the oracle driver we specify in the change log file all the changes that we want to apply against our database we will see in more details during the demo how we structure it and what we put in the change log we specify here the connection string in order to connect to our database and also the user and the password for the schema where we want to apply the changes because in my case it will be an update so i will be applying the changes specified in the change log against this schema using the update command i believe that many of you over there are familiar with sql developer but not too many with the sql cl so sql cl is the command line interface interface of sql developer so why i'm introducing it is because there is an integration between sql cl and liquid base so if you have a sql cl at least uh, in 19.2 version and you do a help lb you will be able to see what operations are available so you will have the help of this command if uh, it, you don't find it very detailed you can go to the documentation so the to the sql developer command line documentation and see what each and every uh, of this operation do seen until now uh, all these components the multi-tenant uh, option the rds the database versioning tool but what we need is something to make all these uh, tools spin in the right direction what we need is to build the pipeline using jenkins what jenkins is is an open source automation server that helps automate steps of software development like build like test and uh, as we will see in the in my demo it will help automate the provisioning of databases jenkins is just one of the many open source tools that are available over there on the market that can help you build pipelines Pipelines are uh, just a series of steps that can be executed in order to complete a workflow. Just before the demo, this is a diagram of the flow of the demo of what we are going to see. Let's take uh, a use case. Let's say you have a developer that does a commit, uh, uh, needs to change something in the code that's associated with that change in the code. There is a change associated to the database he commits both the changes to the code and the changes that needs to be applied on the database he does a commit in a source control and that will trigger the uh, execution of the pipeline so in the first step of the pipeline we are going to create a new pluggable database by using a rest api call we have ords over here after this step is successfully completed uh, in the second step, we are going to apply the changes against our pluggable database. Of course, at this step, you can include code builds, you can include automated testing. I haven't uh, done this, but it is possible to do it. And last but not least, also by doing a REST API call, you can clean up the environment and you remove the database uh, if, uh, if all the tests are completed correctly and you don't need it anymore. Let's go uh, directly to the demo. The last part of the, of the demo. 
uh, we have here Jenkins, where I uh, build few uh, pipelines. We are going to work today with this one. So create UAP environment. If I click configure, I'll be able to see the description of the pipeline, but because it is not very visible over here, I will open it using this tool. In the first step, what I'm doing, I'm creating a new pluggable database, VRS. I've used here the same REST call that we've seen in Insomnia. I'm just cloning using uh, a new pluggable database name. After this step is completed, what I'm doing is to apply data model changes against my newly created pluggable database using Liquibase. How I invoke it? I have over here the Liquibase library. I specify the driver that I'm using to connect, uh, the connection string, so I have here the connection string and username, password, and change log files. I need this file to define uh, all the changes that I want to apply against my database. Before going into more explanation on what these files contains, I'm doing here two operations. I'm doing a tag of my pluggable database and an update. I'm using the tag to be able to mark the database before the update. Why I'm doing this? Because I will, uh, if I need to come back to this specific point in time, uh, Liquibase will know where to return. So it will know that I want my database in this state as it was over here. Let's continue and see what this controller.xml contains. It contains all the changes that I want applied against my database. I have defined them in SQL format. I have uh, one script, script uh, 01.sql and script 02.sql. Each of these scripts are uh, associated with the rollback phase. So for uh, all it that is uh, created over here, I associate the script that does an undo. So uh, let's see. In the script 01.sql, I'm creating a new table, I'm creating a sequence, and I'm doing an insert. In the rollback script, I do the exact opposite. So I drop the table and I drop the sequence. Have also a second script where I'm creating a function, get table count, and the, the rollback, of course, I'll be removing this function. With no further explanation, let's see how this actually works. Okay, before uh, we will check the databases, we don't have the any database open in read-write mode. Let's do a build now. So by building the pipeline will run. I introduce here some input to request. So to request the name of the pluggable database and the password for the MVAT user, I click proceed. This will trigger the execution of the first step. Pluggable database would get created. We'll just give it a couple of seconds, doesn't uh, take very long in order to do the cloning. This new pluggable database will be created as clone as PDB1. We will create a new pluggable database PDB new clone as clone of PDB1. If we go back to the database, it looks like that has been created. We will be waiting for it to be open in read mode so if we check the logs over here of the pipeline we have the new pluggable database created this step has successfully been completed and also liquibase was executed the tagging was done successful against my new pluggable database 
and uh, also the updates so scripts contained in controller.xml were applied against my database so let's do again a show i have my new database open in read write mode let's connect to it and see if the changes are there okay the table has been created let me see hopefully it is visible i'm connected to the pluggable database that has been created i'm doing a select against the table that i defined in the first script so it was created and it also contains a row function is there looks that it is it has been created get table count let's say that i'm not happy with the changes that were applied against my database and what i want to do is just to revert them but keep the pluggable database because i want to apply other changes what i can do i can create uh, another pipeline like the one i have here What this pipeline does is just roll back the data model changes against a pluggable that I specify. I'm again invoking Liquibase. I'm specifying the driver, the Oracle driver, the connection string to my pluggable database, the username and the password, the change log file, and now I do a rollback operation so i'm rolling back the changes to a specific tag in my case i've only used one tag so no not a lot of options to choose from i will roll back to the 1.0 tag let's go over here and go back to it and build it okay console output input request it requests for the pluggable database name for the password of the uh, default user mvit UAT user the tag to which i want to roll back so the specific point in time i hit proceed liquid base is getting executed is connecting to to my schema and does a roll back to this tag it looks like it has finished successfully let's also confirm in the database and let's check for the objects that were applied in the first pipeline if i do a select it looks like that the table is no uh, no longer there and if i check for the function is the same looks like the rollback worked this was the uh, demo part of my presentation we've seen how we can integrate the life cycle management of our pluggable database in a pipeline so how can we create a pluggable database how can we clone it and how can we drop it using rest api calls and how they can be integrated with the tool like jenkins and with the database versioning tool like Liquibase in order to be able to uh, deliver much faster these changes for your uh, development team. Now it's time for Q&As. Let me know if there are any questions. If there are no questions for the moment, uh, this is my email address so you can uh, contact me if there are uh, questions later in the day but uh, let me know if there are questions now so if someone has a question feel free to write it in the q and a panel i have one question um is this uh, just um another way to it's just like a flashback in the database we use flashback if we do a deployment so is this a new way 
that we can avoid using flashback and started using the liquid base or the Oracle REST data services? There, uh, this is, uh, I would uh, call it an alternative in case okay. you are using database versioning, like we do with the code versioning, mm -hmm. you can do database versioning. So in order to know what changes were applied yeah. against your database, you can use liquid base because you will have all your changes that were applied or rollback uh, you will uh, have them stored somewhere in your source control you will know what was executed against your database if you are using flashback only you as the dba will know what happened Okay. If you are using this method everything will be tracked there's a table called the database change logs Mm -hmm. If I'm uh, correct, where all these changes are tracked and everyone will know what happened with the schema. Oh, okay. So can I do all, um, some stress tests with this, um, just like RED, so just a real application testing? Or we just mm, only to track the, the changes I do in a deployment? Was designed in order to address uh, developer needs mostly for them to be able to track easier the changes. Okay. So does it cost anything in uh, or is it for free? The base is available for uh, for free. I believe they also have, I don't know if it is called enterprise, but uh, is a paid version of the product, but this okay. one available for free also. Okay, super, thank you. Other questions? If someone would like, he can also raise his hand and we give him, can give him the possibility to talk. So Flavio, as I think there won't be any other question, we want to close the session. Yes, I can close the session. So um, thank you, Manuela, for this presentation and um, how uh, this works. Uh, I think it will be a, a really good future for um, DevOps because um, we are, uh, always uh, having some problems to track what changed and I think it's going to be a use multi-tenant.